Hello everybody, this is Mariana Smolcic from Croatia. Welcome to the Reform Symposium Conference. Um, we have a guest speaker now, Cristina Montero Silva from Porto in Portugal. Uh, Cristina has joined the Reform Symposium Conference and uh, she will tell us more about uh, her interesting small project and big motivation session. Uh, Christina uh, is also an ESL teacher, a teacher trainer, a researcher and Cambridge KSS examiner and has been teaching for the past 20 years uh, in Porto, Portugal. Uh, she has also been engaged in several European projects such as Itvini and Comenius and always in search for a different and innovative ways of teaching uh, and I think she is an avid participant also of webinars, seminars, all kinds of MOOCs and courses and we are so happy to have her here as well. So without further ado, Christina, welcome and the mic is yours. Okay, thank you for the introduction, Mariana, you're a sweet. Uh, so I won't uh, take too long, otherwise I'll get lost with my my slides and all the things I have to say. So I'm going to talk about basically about uh, the projects, the small projects I do with my students. Thanks for being here, everybody, Ariana and all the others that I've all already greeted. Um, so the small projects I do, I chose this sentence because I think this is very true. Uh, sometimes if they can learn the way we teach, we have to adapt a bit to what they like and to what they need. So these projects are a bit uh, about this uh, issue here. Um, these projects also focus on the, what we call the 21st century skills like language skills, um, digital competences, uh, sharing which is the word for the century and also cooperative interdependent work. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about eat winning, not much blogging, uh, Storybird, it's an e-story I did with my students and also a book trailer. Now, uh, eat winning, we have an expert in the audience, uh, an ambassador actually, Ariana, and uh, she could explain this much better than me, but anyway, eat winning is a community of European schools um, that share, that can work together make projects, share ideas, the teachers can connect, they can participate in activities, they have a twin space where they can put their things and share the things. They are in fact European projects for, well, for uh, members of the European Union but not only because countries like Croatia, Switzerland and Turkey also make these projects. They are always collaborative and you can establish a partnership with different countries, with just one or with several countries. I had a small project with 18 partners and I think that we're now more than 20. Uh, you can do any kind of project that you like. It can be a math project, a science project, a language project, whatever you're interested in, uh, with a special emphasis on ICT, obviously. Now, what I did with Eat Winning this year was what, what is usually called transnational mobility, meaning student exchange. Okay, that's what I did. And how did I do it? First, I went to the Eat Winning platform. I'm going to paste uh, the site, the Eat Winning site in the chat box for those of you who are interested in checking what it winning is. So first I looked for a partner, so you have to register in the platform, in the it winning platform. I looked for a partner, then when I found one, we agreed that we would create a Facebook group so that the students could start interacting with each other, posting things about their countries and about themselves. And we called this group Let's Blend Cultures. That's the name we gave it. And the partnership was between Portugal and Hungary, so Porto and Budapest. And so in March, uh, we went to Budapest and I show you some pictures of the group I took to Budapest. And in June, Budapest came to Portugal. 
Uh, we prepare some classes for them, some activities, and also some uh, cultural activities, the cultural program. And it was very successful. The students were very, very happy with this. Now, I'm a blended learning uh, addicted. So all my classes, I like to use blended learning, classroom learning, online learning, mobile learning. So in my classes, I usually use mobiles, laptops, and tablets, always hoping that my students say the same thing as this little pink man says, learning with a mobile is fun, learning with a teacher is also fun. Um, so for a start, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, a, uh, a tool I found to blog with my students. So this year, I decided I would blog with them. I had my own blog, but I wanted them to blog as well. Uh, but I didn't want to use the, the platforms I'm used to see. And then I came across this one, which is called Kid Blog, and it's fantastic because it's specially for teachers and students. Why? I made a, a kind of a drawing so that you could understand better how Kid Blog works. So Kid Blog is a big blog. You get a class blog, and then each student gets his own individual blog where he posts his things. He can write about anything, or you can establish with them what they um, will uh, do in the blog, and pasting the, the website as well. So this is how KidBlog works, and I found it to be very, very good. You can moderate uh, the posts and the comments as well. So this is how a a class blog looks like. This was actually taken from one of my classes. You see this is the class blog and you see their names written and their posts. If you click on one of those names or posts, you see this. So you go into a specific student's blog. This one has a nickname, Vanilla Sky, and she was actually a very good writer. She wrote this beautiful text that I decided to uh, show you as an example. And why blogging? Well, first I think it disintegrates writing, and it did. Honestly, it did. It triggers creativity. It is fun because you share it. You can share it with anyone you want to. And parents are involved. It's a good way to involve parents, and they like to see what their kids are doing. And for one thing, you don't lose your text. Sometimes when you write things, then the next year you don't know where they are. At least here, you know that they're not lost in your attic or something. How did I do this? So I scheduled the blog post in advance so that all the students knew exactly when they were supposed to post a blog. I gave them, these were secondary uh, students, 11th grade students, and I told them they would have to write a minimum of 300 words, and they did. So every week they had a different class blogger and all the other members of the class had to comment on that blog post. And it was amazing because I thought I would be moderating one post every week and I ended up moderating 10 posts and more every week uh, because they found that to be so funny, so, I mean, not funny as well, but fun, that they started writing and writing and writing. It was really great. And I've, I had actually two students that started to write a book chapter by chapter. And I think that next year, they one of them is on chapter eight, so I guess that next, next year they will probably finish the book. So it was, for me, it was a very rewarding experience. Now, another thing I did with my students was uh, uh, to use this uh, tool called Storybird that most of you know and have heard about it. And I use them with the, the older ones and the younger ones because I have all of them. Um, this is fun. For those of you who don't know, uh, you can access a Storybird, you register, and then you have a whole bunch of themes, drawings that you can choose to illustrate your story. So you write a story and you get images, drawings to go along with your story. This is very good too. 
and it also incentivates writing. So I had the groups divided in three, and I had the, the tasks clearly distributed. Each one knew precisely what he was supposed to do. They used tablets, because we have tablets at school, and they had a due date. I think it's important for them to know how much time they have and uh, that they have to plan their things according to the time they have. Um, so they wrote an e-story. Why did I call this interdependent work, which is also a 21st century skill that people talk about so much these days? Because I actually gave them a task, specific tasks, and I even created these sort of banners that I gave each one of them. So one of them was, was the designer, uh, the other one was the activity manager, the other one was the writer, and one depended on the other. So the activity manager couldn't start working if the designer hadn't done his task, and the writer couldn't start working if the activity manager hadn't chosen the activities he wanted to include in his or in their story. So they were dependent on each other, and that was good. Obviously, time management is also important to start um, at an early age, I would say. So I have a task that, that, that made them feel important. They were 10. I was working with the fifth grade on this. And they were really happy because they had a task, and they had a banner in front of them to show what task they were assigned. So they learned how to work collaboratively. They were very creative. They are incredibly creative when, when we give them the tools when, and, and the room to do that. And they learned how to listen to each other, uh, and which is also very important. Kids have some trouble with that, as you know. And they learned also to value each other's tasks because they depended on, on, on it. Another thing I did with my students was a book trailer, not a movie trailer, but a book trailer. So we read a novel, actually, we read a novel, and we analyzed it in class, and then I challenged them to produce a book trailer to make part, uh, to be part of a digital library. And why a book trailer? Um, well, as the sentence shows, trailers aren't just for movies anymore. So you can as well do it with, uh, with books, and it's quite motivating. Actually, they found that to be innovative. They found that to be inspiring, creative, and they improved their digital skills as well. So the, the only thing I asked them, so they had to read the novel, we analyzed the novel in class, and then they had to build a trailer, a sort of a teaser, uh, to be part of a digital library. I gave them the project guidelines, what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to talk about the characters and give some features about the characters. They were supposed to provide us with a short synopsis of the story. And they were free to choose all the multimedia tools they felt more comfortable with. Most of them actually chose Movie Maker because it's the, one of the easiest, but they came up with very, very different things, I assure you. So some of them, as you see in the picture, these are screenshots of some of the work they did. Some of them decided to film themselves, so they acted as the characters, and they added the music, and it sounded like those movie trailers you actually see on TV. Others uh, decided to use, because there's a, there's a movie on this novel. The novel was about a boy by Nick Hornby. And actually, they took some pictures from the, uh, some images from the book, and then they worked on those images. So they are really digitally competent. When you, when, you, when you teach them. I actually provided them with some tutorials. I, every now and then, I produce some tutorials and I give them. But actually, I don't need them, because if you go to the, the, the internet, you have lots of tutorials on how to use these tools. One of the groups decided, one of the groups decided not to film, not to use uh, 
any moving images, but they use drawings that they did themselves. And you can see that on the top um, right corner of the image. And every single image there is connected with a character that they are uh, talking about. So they are describing the character through uh, little images around. And they also use uh, humor, right? Humor, and, and I find that to be amazing. Uh, uh, Mariana is asking me how I assess them. That's the worst part, but I'm still working on that. I've been doing projects for uh, some years now, and I have some grids, um, some rubrics that I use to assess these projects. But every time I do a project, I change the rubric. I change it. I keep changing it because I keep uh, finding it incomplete or I keep saying that you know, that's not good. So every time I do this, I create a new rubric. And sometimes I work together with other colleagues. Sometimes I work on my own. But especially they know that they are being assessed and they see the grids, the assessment grids, before they start the project. I always do that, okay? Because they know how they are going to be assessed so that they can invest on those specific uh, criteria, okay? And, um, well, success. What is success for students and for teachers? For me as a teacher, success is to enjoy and to have fun. And honestly, I can tell you that I do enjoy and I do have a lot of fun with my students. And when we as educators, when we do this, when we have fun and we enjoy, this is contagious and the students can sense that. They can sense, they can feel. And I think they will enjoy and have fun along with us. And that's it. I guess I still have more time, but I try to be as quick as possible, not to take too much time. So I hope you have enjoyed. And Mariana, I don't know if you want yeah, to. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, it was a wonderful session, as I said, and I posted already on Facebook. Great ideas, interesting uh, 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 things you have been doing, and um, wonderful projects, simply wonderful projects. And I think you have gave a lot of us many ideas. Um, if there are any questions, we can ask you to post them uh, in chat. I already did, and uh, Christina answered it, because assessment is still the biggest question for all of us teachers, especially and yes. when they are doing such wonderful things, projects, uh, uh, and uh, most of the stuff have been done probably uh, as a blended learning. But my ask question yes. is the age of students. Did they vary from young learners to teenagers, or who do you teach, actually? Well, actually, this year I had 5th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. And I did projects with all of them. So it's like 12 years and of age, 16, 18, something like that, right? Yeah, 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 right. But in my school, the language department decided that we would all make one project on the second term together. We worked together from the 6th to the 12th grade. So one of these projects was common to all teachers and to all grades. These I showed today are particularly mine that I use in my classes. But as a group of teachers, we also had one project, also with guidelines and a different theme for every level they were in, so a different theme for the fifth grade, for the sixth, and so on. But we did a project to replace a written test. Oh. So that was a decision of the school. Yeah. The second test, we usually do two, two written tests per term. Each term we do two. And on the second term, it was a, the school policy to abolish one of the tests and replace it by a project. And actually, my school now is investing a lot in this project-based learning. And actually, yesterday I was in a seminar in my school, and I was also making a presentation about projects. 
and each department in my school made a presentation. So we are actually investing on this. Yeah, Theodora mentions that you have been working together with her on her on the air project. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> it was also a wonderful project. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there's lots of ideas. Our project, yes. There are and Fabiana as well and other colleagues, and um, there have been also. Um, these uh, e-training projects that you have mentioned of mobility. So the e-training project, particular yeah. one, you actually created to, to, to ask people to do the mobility. So just a few more words on this so that people know how this worked for you, even though e-training, uh, for those who don't know, is only for doing online projects. But uh, this is what I loved about yeah. Christina. She managed to do mobilities. Yeah. Yeah, I, I started doing... Uh, e-training projects online, which is what it is supposed to do. But then I, I've always wanted to do student exchange. And um, I, I wonder, why not try through the e-training platform, find a partner that can uh, exchange students? And we did that. Of course, we don't have funds. There's no money because this is not a Camenius or an Erasmus. There's no funding whatsoever. So what we did, we had to play to pay. In this case, we had to pay for the plane uh, flight. And that was all we paid for. Because when we went to Budapest, the students stayed with students, and I stayed with the teacher. And when they came here, it was the same. So the teacher stayed with me, and the students with yeah. the it was a real student, student home exchange, and uh, that's fantastic. This is what. Yeah. Well, you have yeah. shared kid blog projects, uh, wonderful things, and uh, uh, e weaning and um, all other things. And I think we have got a lot of great ideas. And uh, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you did. We did. <laughs> we at least uh, get the idea. I was wondering of kid blog using, but still haven't. But I, I love this that you give one student blogger for one week and the others comment. And uh, that's, that's yeah. better than all of them writing every week, for instance. At least uh, they concentrate. Yeah. It is, it is uh, as I said, yeah. you can overlearn from something. Uh, any questions more? If we are done, thank you so much, Christina, for coming and for... Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you for moderating me and thank you for bringing me here, Mariana. Yeah, yeah. I'm very glad you came finally and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that actually you came and I, and I wasn't wrong. I knew that you will uh, encourage us to do great, great stuff and great uh, projects. Thank you so much and thank you everybody thank for you. coming. Uh, I will stop the recording okay. now. Um, this was uh, Christina. Uh, Silva from Portugal with lots of interesting ideas and uh, you can follow her uh, blog christinamsilva.wordpress.com I post it in the chat thank you all and goodbye